So welcome to our session on integrating Swift UI into a UI kit app presented by Natalia Panforova. And before I give her the stage, I would love to introduce her. So Natalia is an iOS and macOS engineer and the co-founder of Nilco LSing. She has been developing mobile and web applications for over six years and particularly enjoys working with the Swift UI framework. She was also recently part of the core Swift UI team at Apple, designing and building Swift UI APIs. Natalia likes to share what she learns with the iOS developer community on Twitter and on her company blog. So after Natalia presents, uh, we'll then have a discussion round. So please send in your questions in the Q&A &A tab uh, within this session itself. So over to you, Natalia. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Happy to join you all today. So we're going to talk about how to start adopting SwiftUI by embedding SwiftUI views into an existing UIKit application to take advantage of the new features and APIs. So my name is Natalia, uh, and I live in New Zealand. I'm a software engineer focusing on building apps for Apple platforms. I also like to write blog articles covering different Swift and SwiftUI related topics. Actually, I'm currently working on a book that will cover how to integrate SwiftUI into UIKit applications in detail. So if you're interested in learning more on this topic after today, you can follow me on Twitter for updates on the book or sign up to get notified by email when it's released. In this presentation, I would like to share with you some techniques on how to get started with SwiftUI in your UIKit app. We're going to talk about why we'd want to add SwiftUI and what are the best places in the app to start embedding SwiftUI views. Then we will see different ways of embedding SwiftUI using UI hosting controller. We will also see how to use SwiftUI in UI table view or UI collection view cells with the help of the new UI hosting configuration API. I will give you some tips on setting up the data flow between UIKit and SwiftUI parts of the app. And finally, we'll look into adjusting size and position of embedded SwiftUI views. Let's start with a quick refresher on SwiftUI and how it differs from UIKit. SwiftUI is a framework introduced in 2019 that lets us build application UI on all Apple platforms. It uses declarative syntax, which means that instead of calling functions and updating our UI manually when some state changes, we describe what our interface looks like based on a state. And SwiftUI framework updates the UI automatically for us. A view in SwiftUI is a function of state. SwiftUI views are structs compared to classes in UIKit. They're lightweight and are collapsed by the framework into an efficient data structure under the hood. So we can make many small SwiftUI views in our apps without worrying about the performance overhead. SwiftUI views are immutable structs passed by value. We can't simply store a SwiftUI view and update its properties. It won't update the UI. This will be important later when we talk about setting up the data flow. To make sure that our UI is refreshed when needed, we need to use special SwiftUI property wrappers. Layout system in SwiftUI is also different from UIKit. Views choose their own size based on the proposed available size by the parent. Parent views are responsible for positioning child views within the parent's coordinate system. SwiftUI doesn't use auto layout constraints. We can also mix SwiftUI with UIKit in one application and choose which framework is right for our specific com uh, com component based on our needs and objectives. Hey, Natalia, just a quick question. Um, just want to confirm that, are you sharing some slides right now or is it on the title slide? Uh, I am actually switching, is it not switching? No, I. we can just see, or at least it's just me that I can see the title slide where it says integrate mm. SwiftUI. Is that mm. just me or can the others also see? I just want to confirm. So the current slide I'm presenting is quick overview of SwiftUI. Okay, maybe it's just me and then I just want to confirm. Okay. If everyone else can see the right stuff, then that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Good to know. Well, thank you for checking. Okay, 
So let's see why we'd want to start using SwiftUI in an existing application. Firstly, it can be simpler and faster to create new components using SwiftUI rather than UIKit. We can define them in code and use Xcode preview, previews to quickly check the results. Uh, we might also want to take advantage of the new features that only work in SwiftUI, such as, for example, the new Swift Charts framework. And we can also create home screen widgets and the new log screen widgets using SwiftUI, but we won't be covering them in this talk. Gradually integrating SwiftUI can help us to update our code base with new features without rewriting the existing interface that already works well. So what are the best places in our apps where we can start integrating SwiftUI? It's a good idea to look out for self-contained views and controllers first, such as sheets or popovers. It's quite easy to present a controller containing the SwiftUI view as we would any other controller. The same applies to navigation destinations pushed onto the stack. Another common place to embed SwiftUI is inside UI table view or UI collection view cells. Starting from iOS 16, we have a new UI hosting configuration API that makes the task much simpler. We can also embed a controller containing SwiftUI as a child view controller, in case we need to add a SwiftUI component within an existing UI view controller. Uh, to integrate SwiftUI views in different parts of our app, we use a UI hosting controller. It's a view controller that hosts a SwiftUI view hierarchy. Uh, the UI view stored in its view property contains the SwiftUI view. It's important not to separate UI hosting controller from its view. Otherwise, the SwiftUI part might not work as expected. We can create a UI hosting controller in code by passing it a SwiftUI view as the root view parameter. It can be presented like any other view controller. Uh, in the example we see on the current slide, uh, we define a SwiftUI view called MyView. When the show SwiftUI Swift action is called, we create a UI hosting controller and pass it our SwiftUI view as the root view parameter. We then present the controller in a model. Let's take a look at a more realistic example now. Imagine we have a UIKit application that showcases different walks in the area. The list of walks is a standard UI table view. And we decided to use SwiftUI in the walk detail view so that we can take advantage of the new Swift charts framework and add a chart to our app. The detail view shows the walk image and a short description. The chart, visualizes the selected walk uh, duration in comparison with all the other walks in the app. Uh, we are going to see a few different ways to achieve this programmatically and using storyboards. So one way to present a controller that contains a SwiftUI view hierarchy is to initialize it in code and programmatically push it onto the navigation stack. In the current example, we define a walk detail view in SwiftUI that also contains a chart built with the new Swift charts framework. Note that we can even set the navigation title within the SwiftUI view and it will get propagated to the presented view controller. To push our SwiftUI view onto the navigation stack in UIKit, we create a UI hosting controller when a cell is selected. We pass the walk detail view as the root view parameter. The detail view receives the data that it needs to present, the selected walk index and the walks array containing all the walks. Um, it needs them to construct the chart comparing walk durations. In our example, the detail view simply shows the data we pass it. The data is static and the detail view doesn't modify it in any way. So we can just pass it the values without worrying about updating the view or the data it receives. We will look into how to set up other types of data flow later in the talk. 
We can also create a UI hosting control in a storyboard instead and add a storyboard segue to push the detail view onto the navigation stack. The object library in Xcode contains a hosting view controller that we can drag to the canvas and connect like any other controller. But we still need to assign our walk detail Swift UI view as the hosting controller's root view. One way to make it work is to customize the show segue in code. We can control drag from the storyboard segue to the walks view controller to create a segue action. Inside the action, we initialize a UI hosting controller with the code passed to the action and the Swift UI walk detail view as the root view. This will achieve the same result as presenting UI hosting controller fully in code. Another way to set up a UI hosting controller created in the storyboard is to subclass it. It's more common to use subclassing methods to present Swift UI views that don't depend on the index path of dynamic cell selection because it can be tricky to pass data to the subclass view controller. So we are going to look at a different example with a static cell instead. Imagine that we added a new root controller to our app that navigates to different pieces of information about Christchurch, the city where I live. We put our previous walks view controller under the walks cell, and now we need to implement new destinations for the other cells that we added. We decided to create the environment detail view fully in Swift UI because it's faster and more convenient. First, we define our environment view in Swift UI. We take advantage of the Xcode previews to view the UI as we built it and make adjustments. Also know that we can build nested Swift UI hierarchies and embed them in UIKit. Like here, for example, we are nesting environment list view, also built in Swift UI inside the environment view. Now we are going to subclass UI hosting controller and implement its required initializer. Inside the initializer, we'll assign our environment view uh, built in Swift UI as the controller's root view. UI hosting controller is a generic class. When I'm classing it, we need to specify the concrete type of its content. Its content is the Swift UI view that is assigned as the root. So that type is environment view in our example. Once our subclass of UI hosting controller is ready, we can assign it to the view controller that we created in the storyboard. This is all that's required to present the environment view built in Swift UI as a detail of the table view. So far, we looked at ways to present a Swift UI view in a separate view controller. But there can be cases where we'd want to embed a view built in Swift UI within an existing UI kit controller that already has some content built in UIKit. So let's look into it next. We'll go back to our walk detail view, but this time the walk detail view controller itself is built in UIKit. We have an image and a description label all set up with UIKit as well. Now we want to add a chart using the Swift charts framework. For that, we need to embed a Swift UI view within our existing UIKit controller. To embed a Swift UI view within a UI kit view controller, we still need to use UI hosting controller and add it as a child view controller. Let's see how we can set this up using the storyboard. First, we will add a container view in the area where we want to embed the Swift UI view and set the layout constraints to size and position the container. The container view comes with a default view controller, but we need to delete it because we need to use a UI hosting controller in its place instead. Once we removed the default child view controller, we can drop a new UI hosting controller on the canvas. Then we need to set up a segue from the container view to the new hosting controller by control dragging from the container to the controller and choosing the embed action.
When it's all set up correctly, you'll see that the hosting controller becomes smaller in size, just how the original default controller added with the container view was. To configure the hosting controller to display our Swift UI chart view, we will create an IB segue action because we need to pass it some data such as the list of walks and the selection. If you have a situation when you don't need to pass any data to the Swift UI view, you can use the subclassing technique that I showed before. We can also embed UI hosting controller as a child view controller programmatically as an alternative to setting it up in a storyboard. We can set up the hosting controller and the Swift UI view in the view did load method of walk detail controller. First, we create our chart view built in Swift UI and assign it as the root view of UI hosting controller that we are going to embed. Then we add the hosting controller as the child of walk detail controller and add its view to the view hierarchy of the parent. We also call did move to parent method on the hosting controller so that it can respond to the change in ownership. After we've set up the parent-child relationship between the controllers, we can size and position the view of the hosting controller with auto layout constraints. Remember that the view property of the hosting controller contains a UI view that manages the Swift UI view hierarchy. So the constraints set up here determine where exactly the Swift UI view will be laid out within the parent view controller. It's important to follow this process of setting up the parent-child relationship between the containing UI kit view controller and the hosting controller. We shouldn't separate the hosting controller from its view. If you decide to simply take the view property of the hosting controller and add it as a subview, basic cases could still work, but SwiftUI relies on the presence of the hosting controller for a lot of functionality. So things might not work as expected for you as you develop the view further. So far, we talked about using a hosting controller to integrate Swift UI views. And until this year, this was the only method available to integrate Swift UI. It was really tricky to add Swift UI to a UI table view or UI collection view cells because of the need to manage the child view controllers. But starting from iOS 16, we have a new API called UI hosting configuration. This API enables us to integrate Swift UI views inside UI table view and UI collection view cells without the need to add a controller. UI hosting configuration is a struct that conforms to UI content configuration protocol and builds upon cell configuration in UIKit. We can create it with a Swift UI view builder assigned it to the content configuration property of the cell. Let's look at an example now. The works list we display in the app is a UI table view built in UIKit. But we are going to define the views inside the cells using Swift UI. Before US 16, it would be quite cumbersome. But now we can take advantage of the new UI hosting configuration API and build the UI for the cells quite quickly. All we need to do is to assign a UI hosting configuration to the content configuration of the cell in UIKit. Inside the view builder passed to the hosting configuration, we can start writing Swift UI code. We can build the Swift UI view hierarchy directly inside the view builder, or we can create a separate Swift UI view, like in the current example, and place it inside the view control, uh, the view builder instead. I chose to create a separate view, uh, walk cell view because it's cleaner and easier to pass the selected walk to it. Because we are not embedding a controller when using a UI hosting configuration, some Swift UI functionality isn't available inside the cells, such as the use of UI view controller representable, for example. UI view controller representable is used in Swift UI to embed a UI kit view control inside a Swift UI view hierarchy. We are not covering this API in this talk. Our current example is with a UI table view, but UI hosting configuration API 
works in the same way with UI collection view cells as well. The API also allows for more customization, such as changing the margins of the content view or setting a custom background for the entire cell. I'm really looking forward to using this API in my project. All the examples we looked at so far had a very simple data flow model. We were just passing data from UIKit to SwiftUI views. But there can be other scenarios where our SwiftUI view either has to update the UI when the data updates, or SwiftUI has to mutate the data itself. What if, for example, the user could choose to sort the walks in the chart based on their duration inside the detail view of the selected walk? In this particular case we are looking at right now, the user would update the switch that is built in UIKit and situated in the UIKit part of the controller. But the sorting setting change has to be reflected in the chart that is part of the embedded SwiftUI view. Here's how the code would be initially set up. We create the SwiftUI view that contains the chart and pass it the initial sorting setting. Then we set up the hosting controller like we discussed earlier. But what do we do when the user toggles the switch? How can we tell the chart view in SwiftUI to update how we display the values? Remember that SwiftUI views are structs, not classes like UI views. We can't store them and update their properties. It won't, it won't change the displayed UI. So it would just update the local copy of the struct. To illustrate this idea further, I would like to show you how we can update what is displayed by the SwiftUI view in a primitive way, which is create a fresh view with the new value. While we can't store and update the SwiftUI view itself, we can store and update the hosting controller because it's a class. So we assign the hosting controller we created to a property on walk detail controller. When the user updates the sorting switch, we assign a fresh SwiftUI view with the updated value to the root view property of the hosting controller. This will update the UI but it's not ideal. SwiftUI has a few property wrappers that help us to manage the state of the view and update the UI when the state changes. Values stored in those properties are managed by the SwiftUI framework and can be mutated, unlike regular stored properties on the SwiftUI view. We can use one of those property wrappers to pass data from UIKit to SwiftUI and make SwiftUI update automatically when the data changes. The property we are going to use is called observed object. It stores an observable object type and lets SwiftUI react to changes in published properties defined in the object. First, we will wrap the sorting switch state into an observable object and define a published property to track the current setting. Then we will add an observed object property wrapper to our SwiftUI view. Note that SwiftUI view doesn't own the object. It is passed to it in the initializer. The UIKit view controller is the owner of the object. Now, when the user toggles the sorting switch, we can simply set the new value for the published property on the observable object. And SwiftUI will update automatically. We can even set up an animation for the changes in the UI in just one line of code. By using the observable object with the observed pro object property wrapper, we can easily set up the data flow from UIKit to SwiftUI and make SwiftUI update the UI automatically when data changes. But observable object is also useful when we want SwiftUI views to be able to make changes to the data and communicate the changes back to UIKit. Let's add an ability to filter walks in the list based on their duration. The controller displaying the walks is built in UIKit, but the filter view presented in the sheet is built in SwiftUI. 
The goal is to let the Swift UI view modify the filter state. It should react to the state change itself by adding the check mark to the selected filter and communicate changes back to UIKit so that list of works can be updated. Here's how the code for the Swift UI filter view could look. We defined an observable object, object works filter to hold the current filter selection state and made the state in num conform to identifiable so that the, the list view in Swift UI can iterate over the cases. The observed, the observed pro property, sorry, the observed uh, object property uh, in the Swift UI view expects to uh, reference the type of Vox filter. Vox filter view can modify the selection state when the user taps on the list row by assigning a new val value to the published property of the observable object. It can also react to changes by updating the UI with the check mark for the selected row. There is something else here that I wanted to point out. We can dismiss our sheet by calling the dismiss action from the environment in Swift UI. The framework provides this action for us to dismiss currently presented views like sheets or navigation destinations. I think the fact that we can present a controller with a UIKit API and dismiss it from within the Swift UI view shows that these two frameworks can integrate really well together. Now, with the Swift UI view ready, we need to configure the UIKit part. Works to controller will be the owner of the filter observable object and will pass it to the Swift UI view before presenting it. To react to changes in the observable object, I'm using the sync method from, the, from combined framework, but you could use any other technique that fits best with your app. You could post a notification when the published property is set or call a delegate method to notify the controller about the updated filter. With combined, we can subscribe the changes to a particular property and react to changes by updating the contents of the table view. With a little bit of time left for the presentation, I would like to give you some, some quick tips on the sizing and positioning of Swift UI views when integrating them in UIKit. Some Swift UI views grow to take all the available space, like a chart, for example, while others will only take as much space as needed, like a text label. In our example, both the chart view and the walk uh, details view are built in Swift UI and embedded inside the UIKit controller using UI hosting controller. The layout contains a constraints for both embedded controllers are the same in, in UIKit. So in both cases, the Swift UI view has the same available space. But we can see that the chart grows to fill up the space while the vertical stack containing text labels only takes as much space as required for the text. And it's centered within the container, even though the labels themselves are left aligned within the vertical stack. To be able to align the text to the top leading edge of the available space in the container, we need to force the view in Swift UI to grow to fill up the space. We can do that by setting a frame on the top level view with max width and max height set to infinity. It will expand the view as much as possible. To align the Swift UI content within the expanded frame, we need to pass an alignment parameter to the frame modifier. We use top leading alignment in this case to make it fit with the rest of the UI in the view controller. So in case you run into an issue like this, remember that not all Swift UI views fill up the space by default and we can force them to do so by using the frame modifier, like in the current example. We've covered a lot today. And I would like to summarize some key points before we move into the Q&A part. We can gradually integrate SwiftUI into an existing UIKit project to take advantage of the new APIs without rewriting the entire project from scratch. To embed SwiftUI views in UIKit, we use UI hosting controller API. 
You can present it as a regular view controller and add it as a child view controller to embed individual components. Starting from iOS 16, we can use the new UI hosting configuration API to write Swift UI inside UI table, table view and UI collection view cells. To update Swift UI views when data changes, we can use an observable object in combination with observed object property wrapper. Swift UI views can also modify properties on the observable object, and UI kit can react to those changes to update the UI. When we want to expand embedded Swift UI views to take the entire available space and to align them inside the container, we can use frame modifier on the rootmost view, view in Swift UI. I hope what we covered today in this talk will help you to get started with integrating Swift UI into your existing UI kit project. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and you can also reach out to me after today on Twitter at natfanferova or through my website, neocoalition.com. You can take a look at my articles covering SwiftUI and other iOS development topics, and check out uh, my book on integrating SwiftUI in UIKit when it's released. That was awesome, <laughs> and a lot of useful content. Um, yeah, uh, Maria, I will just get those links for you and share. Um, they're very interested in your uh, blog and your book, uh, so am I. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much. And we definitely have some questions uh, for you. And a lot of them are from Simon. So I'll get started. Um, so Simon is asking, is it still fundamental or necessary to learn UIKit to get an iOS job these days? And how about a year from now? Mm, that's an interesting question. I think it <laughs> really depends on what sort of companies you are looking for. Um, like you're looking at working at and like what your interests are because there, of course, there are a lot of jobs uh, in UIKit and there will be a lot of jobs in UIKit in the years to come. But I think there are more and more people now looking into adopting Swift UI and it's now getting possible to get a, a job that just uses Swift UI. So if you really enjoy just working in Swift UI, I think you can, you can search for a job just in Swift UI. Uh, if it doesn't matter and you like both frameworks or prefer UIKit, that's great too. And there are plenty of jobs for UIKit. Um, I think eventually probably uh, it's good to know both uh, because as, as you see, there are some features that are only available in Swift UI, but there are also some features that are currently only available in UIKit. So I think at some point you will need to look into integrating them together. Uh, but for starting out, just choose what feels right for you, I think. Like what, what framework like speaks to you? What is more clear um, to, like to work with? For example, like I started with UIKit a while back, but when I uh, like saw Swift UI and I started following Swift UI tutorials, I really thought, oh, this like clicks really much better for me. So like, I'll just look more into Swift UI, but it's different for everyone. Yeah, that makes sense. And I shared um, the links for your book and your blog. Um, so some more questions from Simon. Is Swift UI based on UIKit in any way? Uh, do you mean like internally? Uh, that's what I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really talk much about that, but it definitely integrates with UIKit. <laughs> like you can you can embed um, like UIKit views and controllers within Swift UI. Um, but yeah, I can't unfortunately I can't really share much more about like how it's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> and also, um, is it true that UIKit is still more flexible or customizable for creating views than Swift UI? Um, I think it really depends on what exactly you want to achieve. Like some things are more customizable in UIKit, especially the standard components like list, for example, uh, um, like navigation bars, etc. But I think if you're like looking into creating some custom components and custom animations, uh, then maybe it's easier to customize that in Swift UI in the end. So it's like, yeah, uh, it really depends on what sort of components you're trying to build. That makes sense. Yeah, and one more question from Simon. What are the most used design patterns for an app when using Swift UI? 
Um, so I'm not sure if there is like one like design pattern that we used before with UI kit that's like perfect for Swift UI. So I saw different people experiment with um, uh, MBVM in Swift UI because it's sort of a fits uh, well with reactive patterns. But uh, again, I saw feedback that MBVM is not maybe great for Swift UI because like uh, some some of it configuration is like goes against Swift UI. So I think it's um, because Swift UI is quite new. I think we still have to figure out what's like great, like a great pattern to use in apps, and it will depend on each project. Um, like for my personal projects, I don't really follow like a well known pattern. I just like start building it like very simple, and then once it's like I have too much going on in the view, I separate it into like. Uh, object managing data and stuff like that. So I can't really recommend like one particular well-known pattern uh, to use at the moment. Depends on the project, yeah. And um, do you recommend a new iOS developer uh, should start learning Swift UI first or UI kit? So they're just getting started. What do you recommend? From my perspective, I think Swift UI would be easier to start with. But be ready to learn UI kit at some point. Um, yeah, at some point you might need to learn UI kit anyway. Um, but like, if, if you see Swift UI and if you're like, oh no, it's really like not for me, it's okay to start with UI kit as well and learn Swift UI later. Makes sense. Yeah. And um, are there any performance issues when you integrate these two UI frameworks? And if so, um, do you have any tips on optimizing them? Hmm, that's interesting. I guess it really depends how we integrate them and how we set this up. So I just recommend using the tools like the instruments to see what the problem is. Um, maybe we might have some performance problems if we embed too many controllers and like when we create those controllers, make sure we like, we, for example, like I touched on it briefly. Uh, if we want to add a Swift UI in cells in table view or collection view in the older versions of iOS, I think it can be like tricky if we add too many controllers, for example, if we have like an inference current list and we add too many hosting controls, we might have performance problems there. So it's just worth uh, seeing like your exact project and troubleshooting with the instruments and um, looking into what, what exactly causes the issue. Yeah, um, definitely those are great tips um, <laughs> on uh, app development and especially when you're <laughs> doing challenging things like this. Um, so how essential is knowledge of combine for working with Swift UI? So there are some elements of combine that Swift UI uses, like observable object, for example. So this is really essential to understand. But I wouldn't say that understanding the entire combined framework is essential because we also have um, async await now in Swift. So some, some of it can be actually used with um, some functionality that, that we used combined for before. We can now use async await and Swift UI integrates with async await as well. For example, like it has a task modifier where you can start asynchronous tasks. So yeah, I would say learn the basics of combined look into the observable object, observed object, that's really important. But uh, you, you can go from there, you can learn more um, of combine, or you can learn more of a single weight or both, and then decide what works best in your situation. Yeah, so many options, right? <laughs> Between... yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like, <laughs> I think we have to try them, like, try different options, look into different things and decide what's what's best for us, what's clearer for us, and what works best for our projects. Yeah, okay. so cool. Um, so Jay is asking any recommendations on popping to the root view in UI kit from the Swift UI view and also passing the data back to UI kit while popping. So that's a tricky one, I think. We can use this dismiss action, but it will only dismiss the top view controller. It will not pop to the, to the uh, root view controller. And another thing is like we can't really like access without hacking it, without like traversing the hierarchy, we can't really access the root view controller and Swift UI easily. So there is no like official API to do that. You can try to like inspect the hierarchy, walk the hierarchy from Swift UI and get to the root, control, root view controller this way and yeah, pop back to it. 
Uh, but there is no like official easy API to do that. Yeah. Uh, Ryan is also asking, I heard nesting UI kit to Swift UI, UI kit, or even Swift UI kit to UI kit to Swift UI can cause issues with parameters not passing through multiple layers. Is this true? And if so, what issues should you look out for? Um, like, um, what do you mean? Like, do you mean like with environment through multiple layers or just by passing data? Um, because like, I can't see why there would be issues if we just like pass data from one view to the other. It just like, it depends on us how we pass it. But I can see that environment might not like, yeah, there might be some issues and we need to look in the particular use case to see what's, uh, what's causing it. It can be a bug as well. Like, so worth, worthwhile in the rate, um, if feedback. <laughs> if if um if possible yeah otherwise it, we need to look into like a particular example to see what's going on yeah if you have more to uh say on that Ryan, just let us know um so one more question from jay what are the major issues or limitations in your experience while using swift ui with ui kit uh, so for me it gets tricky when i want to customize some system components like lids for example like I'm uh, working on a project uh, and I would like to have like a very custom appearance for the list with like drag and drop, but it's really tricky to achieve, even though now we have a new API to customize the background of the list. It's still like not enough. Um, so I'm looking into actually like building it myself from scratch probably, or falling back to using the UI collection view for that. But yeah, I think it's, it's the standard system components that don't have all the like hooks that uh, UI kit has at the moment to customize the appearance. Right, okay. Yeah, and um, Ryan confirmed that uh, it was about passing environment values. So um, mm -hmm. they had the question clarified. So thank you for that. And um, do you have any tips on getting into that declarative mindset when you're, when when you're switching from something like UI kit and now you're going into Swift UI, which requires a whole different way of thinking, do you have any suggestions or any tips on thinking that way? Yeah, maybe like try not to force it. Try not to think that you can call something to change something. You like always have to update the state. And then once the state is updated, the view should be updated. Don't think I need to call a function to do something. Think I need to update the value. I need to update the state and then see how much you react to this and then like troubleshoot from there. Right, it's more state oriented. Mm -hmm. It's okay though to think about it. And um, many of us are excited about your book. So could you tell us more about your book and what you plan to cover in it? So I would like it to be um, like a really detailed guide. So I would like to, uh, to uh, put there many tips that like in cover different situations, like a little bit similar to this talk, but uh, more information, more on uh, passing data values, more on sizing, uh, more how um, UI kit integrates with Swift UI, for example, I would like uh, to talk more about uh, how, for example, we can set toolbar uh, values from Swift UI and reflect in uh, UI uh, controller, for example, because we can re really combine uh, like all those things together and uh, propagate them to like to to UI kit from Swift UI. I'll also be covering basics of Swift UI just for people who just getting started as well. And um, uh, it will be also talking about integrating UI kit into Swift UI um, because I think once we migrate start migrating from UI kit to Swift UI at some point. Uh, we probably want to use bigger APIs like navigation and Swift UI, but some of the components are still in UI kit. So we don't have to throw them away. We can actually <laughs> integrate them back into like into the Swift UI now. So yeah, I would like it to be sort of a, a, a guide with details and different examples for people who, who are looking to, to start integrating Swift UI or to migrate their project gradually to Swift UI. That's going to be so helpful. We're going to learn so much from your experience. And I love that you, you mentioned that one of the points is prepare your projects for future updates. So that's awesome. We want to future proof our apps as much as we can. So that's, that's awesome. That's exciting. And uh, thank you so much um, for presenting on this very, very useful uh, talk. Uh, a lot of us high risk engineers are going to benefit from this. And uh, really love that you showed us these different use cases and went through our questions so patiently. 
Thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure to talk to you. Same here. See you. Bye. Bye.